West West Show. Here we go. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Empty Out the Clip, the EOTC podcast, straight out of the heart of West Auckland. I'm here with the brother and myself, Liddy. What's up, bro? What's up, Mozo? What is good, <laughs> man? How are you, so? Good man, good man. Just you know, enjoying this long weekend we've got right now. Bless, we've got another bless, day off man. tomorrow. Hard. Labor Day, which means we're close to Christmas. Bless, straight up. Was that less than like what? Less than two months, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, man. And so, man, I can't wait there. I think I'm getting three weeks off. Our office closed. How about you? Oh, I'm not too sure, but hopefully I got a new job by then. Hopefully. Oh, true. Oh, just quietly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, well. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's get some shout outs out. Yeah, man. Um, I got a semi long list. Um, shout outs to my cousin Ty and um, Lisa. My pursuer, man. Caught up with the fans yesterday out in um, the cemetery in um, Mangri, Minakao Gardens. Um, one year ago, my auntie passed away, um, Dolise, and it's sort of like connected to like a whole list of big trees that we lost in our family um, six years ago. Anniversary today, my uncle Deku passed away as well. Um, he was pretty much one of the first Turks to up and leave from the shores of Takelau and arrived to Wellington. So my family in Poirua, pretty much he was one of the founders of our um, our um, community hall and our family hub in, in uh, Matawala in Poirua. Um, yeah, man, my cup's been brimful with family love this, this, this past um, month um, after the, the wedding in Melbourne and then touching base with my mum's family. So shout outs to my auntie Sipo as well, my auntie Luta, Uncle Epati, and um, to my sister Neta as well. So I caught up with my sister yesterday at the cemetery as well. She's got a nice sound, um, little EV. You would have heard me mention her EV and her rebate of 500 bucks she got because she's the first New Zealand owner of a little cavalier. But yeah, I drove us out to Mangri. It was pretty lit, eh? Like, and I swear to God, man, I've never seen so many beautiful people. I'm talking about this is summer in Mangri. Mangri outside Hong Kong Bakery. Never seen so many pretty old LA, um people, you know, and as well seeing all the flags around the, uh, out and about as well for the tour and Kiwis game. Um, last shout out goes out to um, to my um, my older sister, so my older sister Ruth. I've been, I saw her last week at the um, at the flea market, and in our family, she's known as the microphone voice. This is that person whose normal talking voice is like being amplified like zero to a hundred. And I wanted to sort of like sh- sh- um, shout her out because it's like I haven't had a conversation funnily enough with her since my mom died. And that's like going back some time, you know, and we just make small talk, but I'm having them over next week. So I look forward to getting that over and done with, but also just to catch up with my, my two sisters and my brother. So yeah, that rounds up my shout out to us. But yourself, man. Charles. Yeah, man. I just want to shout out to Dr. Dion Inari uh, for um, coming on the Back of the One for Five podcast um, on, I think, last week, um, late last week. So I'll be dropping that one tomorrow. It was a good talk. He's a doctor. At, uh, he's got his doctorate and he's a lecturer at uh, AUT on sports and recreation. Me. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because when it comes to sports and that, you know, you can get a lot of jobs. Like, it's not just being a PE teacher. You can be an administrator for sports clubs or sports teams, and you can be professional in that area. Like, you know, work in the office at the Blues or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So he's trying to get more Pacific Islanders in that space mm. in the upper levels. And I think his ultimate goal was to try to get Pacific Islanders and in, in actual boards on on sports teams. Yeah. And we are just t- chatting about trying to get a Pacific Islander in the actual – board like in uh, the yeah, NZR, NZR board which would be like a which would be a bit of a mission yeah because I think um, it's a bit of a I don't know feels like there's a bit of racism going on there with these kind of boards eh oh but you know I mean yeah. how, how long has um, Sir Michael Jones been around how long has Brian Williams been around and you ever seen them on any of those kind of boards eh? Bro, that's that um, like when we played uh, England and then the, the TMO got the video got a a, vibe, a Viper call from the CFO from rugby to uh, reverse the decision yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no chance 
but we'll see. It's uphill battle, I think. But now it's a good chat. So I'll be dropping that episode tomorrow, hopefully. Mm. Um, tomorrow night. R- ready for Tuesday. So everyone's back at work, jumping in the cars and can turn on the podcast. And when you're stuck in traffic, you can listen to some of the episode. Um, other shout out goes to DJ Fong, who took me out to the uh, Tour Samoa game uh, yesterday. Yeah, look epic. So he had, some, your he had some free tickets. Huh? So your videos, they look epic. Yeah. Yeah, he had some free tickets and he, he called me up and said, do you want to jump on? And I said, yep. So I picked them up and we called Uber out there and uh, we watched the game. It was we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the game as one of the the topics, but man, it was a good experience to be there. Eh? Just being in the crowd of a sea of red and blue, mm. a sea of flags, man. And we'll, we'll touch on that later on, but man, it felt like Eden Park was our peer park. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful man yeah that was beautiful um also shout out to all the listeners at on whoever listens to the western network podcast yeah we've got 13 podcasts out there you can pick a topic on sports business technology politics or or, or whatever the case may be and 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 this is the podcast how health and fitness also, jump on the EOTC MT the Clip Facebook page as a private page. So, jump on there, answer the free questions that security lets you in. Is your chance to put in some comments or some posts, and we'll talk about it on the podcast. All right, Luz, um, yeah. let's talk about our week. So, how was your week? Oh, jolly, man. Up in Jinx Day. It's pretty much after our podcast um, last week, Sunday. But I still wasn't feeling right, eh? And um, it's sort of like, I didn't have a sore throat, but I just started to f- feel like I was getting, like, the cold sweats at night. And I didn't know whether it was because it was hot or whether it was just me because I had a blocked nose and stuff. But then I started getting a bit chesty and phlegmy, man. I didn't work the whole week. So just manned up and paid the money, gone to a doctor. Fucking doctor said, Charlie got bronchitis, man. He would be on some steroids and some antibiotics. So, yeah, man, you started me off on, like, eight printed zones and I gotta um deduct one a day so it goes like eight, seven, six till I finish them. So I'm on day three. I'm on like five printed zones. But stuff's pretty strong, eh? Cause it's just at night I was having like cough spasms, eh? Like to the point that I was a bit in Eva and you know, I couldn't couldn't just stop, you know, it's just like in the hall, like you know, when someone does the <laughs> and then all of a sudden everyone else just starts coughing. But it was like that man. And I even got a bloody ventilin pump as well. Because I remember post-COVID, when I had it, I was getting a lot of, sh- like, pretty short of breath, like, quite easy. And I went to the doctor, and he goes, oh, we'll try on some ventilin and see if it helps. Helped a lot, eh? But I just forgot because it felt like COVID was a while ago. And But, yeah, I did a COVID test. was negative. Ended up going to the doctor. But it's just my surprise, man. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah you're not well, man. You're the same. So I thought I was making up in my head, bro, you know? But I was like, nah, sorry, I'm sick. So, nah, it's good, man. It's good to get some vitamin D for the good weather. And just, yeah. But it's just weird, you know, having the flu and it's bloody hot. You know? Yeah. Everyone has that experience. <laughs> how about you? Well, it's, um, so, we're sort of transitioning into summer. So, I think that's the worst time to get, uh, that's the, like, common time to get the flu. Mm. When it's that little, when it's transitioning into the next season. Oh. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. when it's like um, autumn, autumn to well, it's winter, change the temperature. Mm. People, people were easy to get sick, and same as now, it's from winter to spring, change the temperature. So the body has to adjust. Are you true that? Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, man. My, my week was man. I had a long week because remember I came back from Samoa last week. Yeah, I stayed home until Wednesday, then went work. Thursday and Friday, and man, even that was long. Thursday and Friday, those two days <laughs> felt like a whole week. So you can imagine what a full week. Yeah. Um, the next week would be. Like, I think so you, I was like, over a day. You I caught was, that sound more buggy was, like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was fucking over a day, and like I was just tapped out on Friday. Yeah. And because I knew it was gonna be a long weekend, so I was like, I was looking forward to that. Just extra day of rest, and then four day week next week or this week coming up. So it's not bad. But uh, yeah, man, I was just excited for this weekend because mm. man, it's gonna be a weekend packed of sports. Oh, very. So it's crazy you talk about sport. I watched nothing, bro. Absolutely nothing. 
and because you know it was sunny and i was like bro it's hot i mm. thought i'd go keep you a tree like there's a there's a tree hanging over our neighbor's fence right on the boundary line and i thought to myself man i wonder if that's dry enough to try and keep you i tried a chainsaw mate and the chainsaw was just it was like it was smoking you know because the tree was that dry mm. so i ended up just getting into jake the musk mode was i got an axe i found it <laughs> I, you know, I was doing some DIY like a couple of weeks ago. Found the axe in between the garage door and the the wardrobe. I took two or two with an axle, and the wall was just kicking my ass. Eh? It was like, man, it's really waking me up to like, man, nigga, get fit, bro. Like, you need to do something mm-hmm. about your weight. Get fit, man. Like, you can't be sick and it's beautiful day outside. It's like, so you know, it's it's put me on that, bro. Like, bro, it's time to push play. You know, start start getting healthy. Go do a session. So what's, what's up with that, that? What's up with that tree? Is it in the way or something? Oh, so when I ordered the fence timber a while ago, I didn't realize I ordered enough to get down the side of the house as well. My neighbor's got some leftover timber, so we've just been talking back and forth. But he keep talking about this tree, and I was like, oh, okay. He cuts it back on his side, and I was thinking, oh, maybe it just looks picture perfect from our side, you know. But he's been cutting it like right back on the fence line. I put a post in yesterday, and like it's quite hard the 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 area that I was trying to put the post. Mm. This is how fresh I am, bro. I didn't even run, I didn't even run a string line from the last post to where there's no posts. I was just gonna do it by eye. It wasn't until today I was just doing a bit of like pulling some weeds out, and I had a look up from my back fence of my deck. You know the black fence at the back. I had a look, and I was like, oh, that looks almost like a half a meter in front of where it should be. So. Fuck it, I'll sit, but I'm gonna do it properly. But when I did go around and had a look on his side of the fence, yeah, that fence that was built less than ten years ago, bro, it's it's pretty mm. young, eh? It's like it's, it doesn't even look like it's been put in properly. But yeah, I think that tree might have might have done a bit of that damage, but I don't think so. So he wants me to cut it right down, but I'm like, brother, unless you pay for the chainsaw to go cut it all the way down to the stump, man, fucking what? And what can come over? Yeah, so. It's like trying to cut two of my thighs off, man. Oh, uh, it's just too fatty. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> but at least it's done. Like, oh. like, I've got pretty much 95% of it gone. So, mm. yeah, it's good to see, like, the trees in the sky. <laughs> yeah. I'd like, there's no more tree blocking the the picture of the, the nice sunset. Mm. Yeah, man. So, so, Friday night just went out of with the missus to the movies man, and this is going to be my, my my movie review for this episode yeah the killers of the flower moon um then S- saturday woke up early to watch the all blacks game bro how was that man i didn't even get up i didn't even get up bro yeah like i literally had my phone ready my sky go had my first haircut mm. and just mm. I, I don't know for some reason i wasn't drawn to watching it eh? Well, it was Argentina. Yeah. But, you know, all for the week, you know, I know Argentina beat us there one time. But, in all honesty, I was thinking, okay, this is going to be an easy game for the All Blacks. Yeah. And it was in the end. Because they pumped him. And I watched it, maybe the first, I watched the first half. But then, in the second half, I was on my phone, looking at my phone, scrolling, mm. trying to watch the game. But, you know, it was All Blacks too far ahead. I was like, oh, it wasn't really exciting. Yeah. It was, it was kind of boring. So, so yeah, that happened. <clears throat> so yeah, I wasn't really, I didn't really get into it when the score was uh, running away from Argentina. Man, because the only the only mm. the only thing and the only stat that I saw that I was proud of was seeing Mark Tellez running stats, and then I was like, mm. oh, our guy obviously played well, so that's all I. Did really he have, he had double digits and line breaks, eh, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like fifteen. Wow. Yeah. Playoffs, like, surely. So I was like, that's my, that's my guy, man. That's our guy. Where's Swiss? <laughs> but that's the thing. You know, that guy, like, when you watch his line breaks, it's almost like he's not making a line break. But he's so yeah. slippery. Like, yeah. He's it's just running like through. Like, yeah, it's like tackling the air. Hey, tackling <laughs> the air. Like, he's that yeah. quick. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like misleading, eh? just his king or like, because yeah. there's no sway on his, because he's got no freaking meat on him. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, but like, but he's not doing it by power. Eh? It's more. Yeah, it's more. It is power, but it's more. Well, agility. I don't know. It, he it, he he turns and spins and yeah. 
his footwork. I mean, it just makes himself real slippery, eh? and you just can't tackle him for some reason. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you know what? I hope, man, and I hope they don't try and change that team because do you reckon that team that they played against Argentina would be their one team with the bench as well? And will, will they roll the same tactic into the final? But they put Botanic on the bench this time, so I'm not sure if that if they're gonna start him. I reckon the team they played Ireland is the starting team. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Mark went get a start. Oh, except for Mark because he oh, so he, he got in trouble. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. That's yeah. yeah. because in that game, Fangangu Fai did make a couple of mistakes. Oh, true. Yeah. We well, got to give it to Fuzzy um, and um. What's his face? The island ex coach you got to give it to the man. Like, I think they've executed their plan into the World Cup, like, pretty good, eh? Like, yeah. I think, when I think about it now, like, overall, like, as for a team that's that's not really seasoned together, you know? Because, you know, like, you know, we're so used to seeing a whole lot of Crusaders, a whole lot of Blues, like, in, like, Imperians and stuff. <laughs> But man, I was thinking, bro, this team is legit, and I and I believe going with the bigger second five, with um Jordi at second five is a good move. The only difference, and I think the 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 pick I would pick Jordi over Sunny Bill in this current moment is the kicking. You know what I mean? You remember that World Cup where we went through all those first fives? We ended up having pity whoopy kick. This year, this World Cup, fuck with that set is like, oh, moment has gone off. Don't worry, we got Barrett. Oh, Barrett's gone. Oh, there's another Barrett that can kick, you know? It's like we've got them all on the park at the same time. And the fact mm. that the kick returns, great. Will Jordan can kick. It's crazy, man. It's like this year they've like pretty much stamped everything off like past World Cups would have sort of like hindered us, you know? Like even like first five. Yeah. You can bring in a guy who can play fullback in first five when um you know McKenzie. So bro, I think well mm. all those games that Billy enough to the World Cup didn't mean shit, you know. This could be the, you know, we could be breaking another world record, man. Yeah, if we win the World Cup next week, it's it's, it's going to be Sunday six thirty a.m. So it's an earlier game. We we would have won four. How would it be the first team to win four? Eh? Yeah, that's that's a feat, hey. That's, yeah, and I mean it'd be the first time on a neutral ground, bro. It looks like you know. Whereas we won one here, we won two here, South Africa won over there. What was the other one? The Japan, eh? We won two in New Zealand and we won one in England, I think. Oh no, France. No, Australia. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> no, nah, it would have been Northern Hemisphere. I think it was England. Mm. But nah, yeah, I think oh, yeah, it's, it's surprising, eh? Did you think that the blocks were going to make it? Were... The Springbok, yeah, yeah. I, I was surprised by England's um determination this morning because what I, I went to wake up early to watch the Springboks England game because I was interested in how if England will will actually do do, do any good and they actually did. Yeah. Yeah, they almost won the game and Springboks struggled against England, even with their their, their killer bench. Well, it was the killer binge that came on and won, and won the game for them. Yeah. So they called the the bomb squad. They yeah. nicknamed the bomb squad. Yeah. So they delivered. Um, did you watch the game? I haven't seen. This also, I haven't watched any sport, man, because I wanted oh. to see who was gonna play us. That, that that's the only game I want to see, man. Yeah. I don't want to like. I don't. You know. You know how you watch. You see, like for example, for me, like you know when you watch Parramatta smash the Eels, or like the Eels smash Penrith. Heading into finals week, right? That put a lot of doubt in whether Penrith was going to do well for some people. I didn't want to have that because I, after watching Ireland and the ABs, that second half it was like, I don't want to be, oh, fuck, man, I don't think the Oprah's going to do it. I just wanted to be like, I watch this final, bro, we're going to do it. I didn't want any doubt set in my head. That's why I don't want to watch this morning's game because I was like, fuck, man, no. they, we're, damn it, we're not going to win, you know? Especially if you're saying that the bomb squad came on and then finished and held held them off. Because mm. otherwise, they could I was kind of torn. Eh? They could have been Samoa in their game. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of torn because I wanted I wanted South Africa to, to win. Because I, oh, I fucking hate England, man. That's my worst team. <laughs> yeah. England to me is like the 
the Crusaders. I put them oh, side man. by side. That's a lot of hate. I put man. those two teams together yeah. side by side between all the, as the teams I hate the most. Yeah. I love to see them lose. So England's up there with Crusaders. <laughs> I wanted England to lose, but at the same time, I wanted them to win so All Blacks can just waste them. Yeah, yeah. Take yeah. their revenge, but I didn't want England to be in the final so they can brag about that. You know? Yeah. And plus, to me, England being in the semi final like that, like they've 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 done one better than all the other best teams in the Six Nations, Ireland, yeah, France, Ireland, you know, in that year, France, and probably even 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 Scotland, even though Scotland didn't make the the quarter finals, but Scotland's a good team. But you know, out of all the Six Nations team, I reckon that England did did not deserve to be there. Yeah. Cool, man. But they played like they deserved to be there because mm. they just got pimped in the last second. So to me, it's like, okay, this is a team like always. They don't care about the games in between the World Cups. Yeah. They come up on, for the World Cup. That's the, yeah. That's the, uh... Like the England's a team that, that win the Six Nations. That, that, it's like they don't care. Mm. Oh, we, we'll just wait till the World Cup. We'll just use that. Another thing, though, England had the easiest run to the semi final. Yeah, yeah. Hard out there. Because the only best team they had in their pool was Argentina. Mm. So they were always going to make it to to the quarters if you think about it. Yeah, true. Yeah. Right? So, and then if they did make the make the quarters, the team that would be likely to knock them out before the World Cup started would have been Australia. Yeah, now, we didn't know Australia was going to be yeah, yeah. useless. So Australia's out. That made a clear path for England. To make it to the semi-final, because well, who did England get in the quarterfinals? They got Fiji, mm. and you know, even though Fiji almost beat them, England came through. Now, if you think about all those games England had, they were undefeated until that last game, right? Yeah. But these are all kind of second-tier teams, yeah. right? Besides, besides Argentina, but it was good, good practice run for them to be battle hardened, like play these second-tier nations. Yeah. Just you know, they almost Samoa almost beat them. But they had a good run. Fiji almost beat them. They had a good run. So when they came to this game against South Africa, they had a good run against South Africa until the last second. But I think because of those games they had previous, it helped them um, do better. Yeah. You know? So I don't know if that was or that was planned <laughs> because <laughs> of the English uh, guy that organizes the whole, whole fucking yeah. thing. But uh, yeah, it's a bit dodgy. Eh? Right, a bit dodgy, dodgy. as it was dodgy as. <laughs> I bet you they're gonna make a film about it in like maybe three or four years' time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad that it's gonna be a Southern Hemisphere final. Hard. Sends out because sends a final. It's it just sends a message to the North again that you know Southern Hemisphere rugby is nothing to fuck with. You know. Yeah, Although up. Australia let us down as some Southern Hemisphere teams. You know that's that, that that's. That's the reason why England were let in. Now, I, I just want to mention something. Ben Smith, he's been on social media lately saying all this controversial shit. I don't know if you've read his, his post on that. Nah. He's been posting on Twitter and all that. But man, I don't know if he's trying to cause um, arguments or what, but he's, say, he's saying all this controversial stuff. His latest quote or his latest post came out today when England lost to uh, South Africa. And he questioned South Africa being a Southern Hemisphere team because they all play up north. Oh yeah. So he was just he was just going against the whole narrative of Southern Hemisphere versus Northern Hemisphere, and said, you know what, this this final is a South versus North final because South Africa plays up north. Yeah. So they're not considered in the in that the oh, debate I anymore. See. And I was yeah, like, oh, shut yeah, up. Yeah, true that is. But uh, but you know, um, it's not about where you play. It's about the the location of your country, true that. Like you can't move South Africa up to the north, north hemisphere. Yeah, but I, I actually see it though. I understand. I understand like the energy he's, yeah, he's pulling with that sort of argument because South Africa is the probably only, well, it's probably like a, a handful of nations, but originally was an only team. I think from the ninety nine World Cup that was picking their players from all over. Eh? They would let that mm. like they they went like Australia and New Zealand like just limited to the guys that played in the um Super Rugby comp. So yeah, going off that. Yeah, but the um South African teams Super Rugby South African teams not in Super Rugby anymore. They're playing up north. Yeah, they're just playing up north. So that's what he was alluding to. So I don't know. I think he's just fucking <laughs> posting these things to get make people angry or yeah, yeah, you know yeah. trying to get a, a, 
rise on people. Because he said there's something else last week about um, something else, and it was it was it was another sort of a. Eh? Was it something along the lines of what um, that Clive Churchill was trying to say about um, the six? One of those six nations is going to be all in the final in the next minute. <laughs> no one's there. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's. If he, if, I don't know, man. I don't know where it's coming from. But I don't know. It's um, even though it it raises a lot of tension in terms of because he's an ex All Black, you know, he's a Kiwi, and he's saying stuff that like go against the Kiwi narrative. Mm. And I'm like thinking, okay, this guy is doing it just to get some reaction. But I think it's good. I think it's good yeah. because this is something we're not used to being a sport, having a sport that kind of sports culture in New Zealand. We don't, we're not used to that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and like. We're not like America when America does this thing all the time, <laughs> like Stephen A. Smith and all those guys. Like, yeah, yeah. Did you hear Stephen A. Smith is like putting down uh, the also a uh, tour? Nah, what was Tango Valo? Yeah, over what he was saying, he's not, he's not a he's he, he's all eats, wow. even though he's um been the man, yeah, 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 this season. Mm. Yeah, Stephen A. Smith doesn't think he's gonna be like in the. He, He's not gonna be the man, like even though he's he's making all these touchdown passes and all that. That's the guy at the Dolphins, eh? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think he, wait, but because it's Stephen A. Smith, bro. He's, he's usually he's usually really good, eh? Like with what he can see, because he's been around too long to sort of see it. And mm. the good thing about Stephen A. Smith, if someone proves him wrong, he'll correct it. And he'll give them flowers, eh? That's the thing about him. Where's the other Palangi guy? What's his name? That bitch, that white Skip. dude? Fuck him. Skip he would never admit, bro. Just like even that, that freaking deal with the, um, the wearing the Mayweather hat. Like, bro, yeah. that dude will never... <laughs> that's, that's the real KTSC. Like, never fall, bro. Fuck. Mm. But nah, it was Stephen A. Smith. I think... I don't know. Maybe he's just putting it out there to sort of hope that there is going to be another actual All-American and maybe a black quarterback that's going to do something bigger than what this dude's doing right now because eh? it's been a, it's been a, mm. been a while eh, since you've ever seen one they're either runners or defenders you ever see them at the back of the you know the front line yeah so what's your opinion on the Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere thing do you think it's good for the game that we have these kind of conversations like we gotta have these sort of um you know, because, you know, Argentina's part of us in, in Sansa, Argentina, New Zealand, South Pacific, Australia, South Africa, being in the Southern Hemisphere. Like, we we got to have some kind, of, some kind of identity yeah. to go against those guys up north in the UK and all that. Yeah, I just feel like, um, because, bro, if you go to Argentina, like, it's still not professional, you know what I mean? They don't like, yeah, like, and I, and I've heard, I know, it, like, like for example, in Ireland, they have like Ivy League, like secondary schools here. Like if you think about the one A comp, you think about the boarding schools here, you know, like do with, like do with in that, like even like Hastings Boys, Gisborne, Tauranga Boys, those schools, like those, those, if you look over the history of New Zealand and secondary schools rugby, that's that started from like you know that's better than grassroots stuff, right? And maybe if you go over there, it's almost like what it is here socially at the rugby club, the sports club, the social clubs. So it's not like that. But in South Africa, their rugby schools are like how it is here. Like they have a history. Like I know like even when I was at school and this probably hasn't happened for a few years, but they would bring schools from South Africa to come and play here. And on those list of schools would be Calston, Auckland Boys, Gisborne, Taronga, Hastings, you know. And it's like, they have the same identity, like, set up in rugby as us. Mm. If we got Argentina up there a bit higher, like, in terms of, like, it's in the schools, you know, that they're bringing it up like that into professional, straight into super, super rugby, I think it would be way better for us. But, I don't know. Obviously, South Africa have done it for themselves to sort of get away, to not mimic how we play down here. Mm. And I think in some sort of way, it probably worked, man, because they weren't sort of exposed to how we play only by watching it, you know? It's different from watching mm. it and actually playing against it. 
So I don't know if there's probably is some sort of deep, deep root into why they actually pulled away from us. Because it's only like from memory, like well, how many finals can you count on your hand that they were South Africa and Australia team in the finals? Highly and unlikely, mm. yeah. Because I mean, look at what the Crusaders. His most successful for team it. in South Africa was probably the Bulls, eh? The Bulls, uh, probably the most like successful. The early stages, like Natal Sharks, like you know, when yeah. the Auckland Glory, like after that. I mean, ACT. Like you couldn't say like, oh, it's gonna be an Australia South Africa final. Yeah, Australia mm-hmm. won a World Cup. South Africa won one. In between that time of Super Rugby just dominating. Mm. But I think the separation is good because, like, can you like you remember when like Johnny Wilkinson and then the South Africans were trying to play the English style with the drop kicks? Like, I'm glad we didn't go back to that shit. Like, if we got to that point, and I remember we trying to predict today if we're gonna see a World Cup and it comes down to fucking drop kicks, fuck, I'm gonna turn TV off, you know. And I'm glad that. We but that's how that. England played this morning. That just all oh. their points came from um, penalties or drop kicks. Yeah. 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 But that's that um, chess sort of rugby, yeah. It's just mm. rock for rock, trying to. Is that boring yeah, sort of rugby? That, yeah, it's not <laughs> that running entertainment like what we see in Super Rugby. Yeah. But yeah, what about you? Yeah, I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of sad that South Africa left Super Rugby because it's dumbed down the, the competition. Yeah. Because Australia's not up to scratch anymore. They're like way behind league and NRL and AFL in Australia. They're like the third sport down there. Yeah. So they don't. Because I heard that their deal with their stay in sports, with their, their broadcasting deal. Yeah. Was there only 19 million? Yeah. That's how much they're worth. 19 million. While the All Blacks, the NZR, their deal with Sky is 100 million. Mm. So big there's a big, big difference there. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, it, it has, like, really watered down the game here, eh? Like, in terms of, like, the entertainment factor and, like, just the challenges, eh? Like, not being sad, man, but it's like, I was actually, like, cringe, like, when I saw the top four after, like, say, four rounds of, like, Super Rugby, you know? Mm. But, I mean, yeah. It almost feels like, man, if it's not Auckland and the Crusaders, it has to be... It has to be at least like either the southern teams or Wellington, but I mean, yeah, it's been a long. It feels like it's been a long time since we've seen like a real good Super Rugby comp, you know. I reckon they should. Um, I think they should format reformat Super Rugby again. Yeah, I think that that's what they should do. They should have only three Australian teams: New South Wales, Queensland, and and ACT. Make it twelve then. Is that Super Twelve? Make it super 12 or and put an extra maybe two New Zealand teams in, yeah. or just make the NPC into a super. Yeah, rugby. I reckon, but I, I, I would, I'd rather push the NPC like as, as a standalone comp and then go to five and maybe Australia three. But mm. I think, yeah, like going back some time, can you remember when they had the, the separation when they had the Japanese team in the comp? You know, the Wolves in it, yeah, the Sun yeah, Wolves. Wolves. Like, I think that was that was semi interesting. But it was when the Wolves had to fly to South Africa and then come back down, you know? I remember, like, the games being like, what the fuck? Like, didn't this team, like, have a short turnaround? But they're ex- it's expected of them, like, to sort of play and not, and not be, yeah. you know? Well, also, I want to break up that Mana Pacifica team because Fiji Jura have proved that they helped Fiji big time. Yeah. You know? So I reckon... You know, you're not going to do much by splitting Samoa and, and Tonga. Yeah. You know, I think you should have one a Super Rugby Samoa team, a Super Rugby Tongan team. Because you've already got a Super Rugby Fijian team, which is Fiji Drua. Yeah. We should have two more teams, Tonga and Samoa. Okay. So, but how would you, what what would be the criteria for playing Moana if you, if you were to draw from those two nations? Like, would they have to be New Zealand based players? Because you know, if you look at it, how how did they benefit like the Samoa team? Because how many players came from that? Because that's more or less just to get a New Zealand contract, really, eh? Because it's a Super Rugby contract. Mm. 
Yeah, no, you you just have to do it. I think you have to. It will be it will be up to the Samoa Rugby Union yeah. to manage that. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm surprised, eh? Like, I'm surprised, like, um, like that Amoa, like, fuck, like, bro, he literally could have played for the for for the Manu. Yeah, he played a he played a cap. You know, he obviously got sucked into playing a cap for for the ABs. Like, there was a handful of players that could have could have gone both ways, but. This is just surprising me. Yeah, well, World Cup, yeah, they, he's they, they, they didn't show up or they don't. Yeah, because I'm always on and off, eh? For the yeah. Blacks, they pick him, then they don't pick him, then they pick him, then they don't pick him. It depends on his form. But I reckon right now, if they don't pick him from now to next World Cup, he's gonna go the. He'll be eligible for Monasamo. Yeah. If he doesn't, if because it's a three-year stand down, right? Mm. So, if he doesn't get picked for All Blacks next year. He's got three years. He's got four years in between to not get picked for the yeah. All Blacks. So we'll see. Oh man, this has been harder. It's it's just been war. Because I used to love. Bro, I'll be honest, but I used to love going up to the pub to watch the Super Rugby. <laughs> to my local. Yeah. I used to bro, love it. Eh? Like you know, I think the last actual game I remember going to the pub and I was like, like you know, so drunk and loud was when um when Wax scored the winning try against the Blues. Like that's how long ago, like we, we enjoyed watching that, you know, the Chiefs and, and the Blues. That just feels like it's been ages, eh? Yeah, I remember that was heartbreaking. See, uh, to see the Auckland Rays, born and raised, <laughs> play for Will Waikato and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm you know, dead, scored eh? a winning try against against oh, bro, huh? his hometown team. <laughs> and what's real, my lear? It was real my lear say one of the boys said it before we even started drinking and like oh pick, pick a score pick a score you know because whoever got the closest score or picked the win would, 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 wouldn't have to shout at me eh? but when the bro mm-hmm. picked it eh, we were like nah piss off because <laughs> I was happy <laughs> but at the same time I was gutted eh? I was like oh mm-hmm. man well at least it was West that scored it <clears throat> sweet man um yeah, so yesterday I went to the Tour Samoa game with um, with DJ, as I mentioned before. Bro, man, I never seen. It was a good experience, man, because in the beginning when we walked in, packed full of Samoa fans, you know, it was packed like we we went down to the King's End for a few beers before the game, and just the amount of um, cars dri- driving down that driving down um, New North Road, the flags on the window, and it's like a, a, a mini parade, man. Everyone walking to the game with their flags. Ah, I had my flag too. And um I had a few beers and we walked down to Eden Park. So like, man, just sea of red, like I said, and when we got there, like we got to our seats, you know, everyone was loud and cheering. But as soon as the boys came out, bruh, see everyone just stand up and the cheer who started happening. Yeah. And man, you see, I looked around, you see, man, there's just flags, man, like I never seen nothing like that, eh? Bro. And then when they did the national anthem, Samo did the national anthem first. Everybody in the stadium was singing. Oh, sick! Yeah. Everybody in the stadium was singing. It was so. I think a tear came down my eye, man, because it was like, wow, this is this is that's the real experience, what's the man. Difference, eh? That's the real what's the difference, <laughs> That's the real what's the difference, man. Sick, yeah. Wow, it was so emotional, eh? And then, but you know what's cool. Like then New Zealand sing then there's from everybody was singing it yeah. too. Oh mean. You know? So it was like, man. Cause they're people, man, we love to sing. Oh yeah. So you know? So we were singing both national anthems. Was it uh Uwa day after afterwards, after the loss? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny because, you know, when I when 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 everyone was singing the national anthem, I was just Feeling like those guys, those Tosa more players in their shoes, like thinking how proud they must feel seeing the crowd like that, or walking out to a crowd like that. Especially them being some, most of them being Australian born, huh? And then, or grew up in Australia. Um, just thinking, man, looking around, looking how much they inspired our people. Like this is just a carryover from the World Cup, huh? You know, and we're just all into it. Was so emotional, and then the hackers, the hackers, the, the hacker. So, see what's up first. Everybody just got up for an A. Everyone was screaming in the crowd. 
And then the the Kiwis did the haka, and everyone was boo. <laughs> everyone was booing. Which I thought, okay, this is uh, this is a different level. You know, this is a different sort of level. Yeah. Way. Like, yeah. like when you think about it, it's Kiwis versus Samoa yeah, in Eden Park. Eden. This is Kiwis' home yeah, ground. This is, this is New Zealand, and it's not. A, and it's, it's like it's supposed to be Eden Park, but it felt like a Pier Park. Because I don't think there was hardly any Kiwi supporters in there. They were, they were, they were, they were but they were in never the still in the. Wouldn't, uh... There was, <laughs> <laughs> damn. But you know the booing of the haka. Now, you always see how other countries, especially in the World Cup, like in the past, like they boo the haka when the All Blacks did the haka, and this, and the the media so onto it, like, man, how disrespectful! <laughs> this is what you get if you boo the haka, yeah. you get wasted by the All Blacks. Yeah, hey, yeah. it's like those. So the, it's like a curse thing, eh? Like you, if you disrespect the haka, yeah. you're why, gonna get bumped by yeah. fifty. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, something like it's it's kind of what happened in the yeah, end because yeah, yeah. Samoa did get pumped by fifty. Did. Yeah, mallet. <laughs> yeah, like didn't respect the haka, but hey, I don't know. What can you say? That's the passion of the fans, man. You just you just have to let it go. You just have to you know let it happen because yeah. you can't stop it. You know, disrespect for what? You can't stop the passion. Yeah, <laughs> but I was like proud, man. I was proud. Even though we know we deserve to try. Or maybe we didn't deserve to try. Because, I don't know. I don't know what you think, man. But the papers always say that. People always say that. The Samuel team is not like the Samuel team at the World yeah. Cup. Well, like, We're weak in the spine, man. Weak in the spine. But even going from like the comparison of numbers and players who had carried over from the World Cup, it was only like four against Australia, right? It was a four or five. I remember, Vossi was just mm. breaking it down on his um radio channel. But yeah, you got to give them credit, man. I mean, they did all right against Australia. I mean, there was like four players from the Rugby, World Club, the Rugby League World Cup that came into play to... So, well, I mean, they did they did the right against Australia because they actually scored points against Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think, yeah, I think if you got a spine like we have, you got you got you got saw at the back, which, which he is exciting, but you know he needs more experience. I think the thing with him, he's got the footwork, he's got the speed, you know, he's got the evasiveness. He's he's a safe player. He catches all those high balls. Mm. He's good defensively, but I think what he's missing is that. A little bit of 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 playmaker, yeah, their pedigree, you know their I mean? creative pedigree, sort of like a Tedesco, yeah. uh, like try and like set, set yeah. up ahead of play, sort of thing, or which gap, which way, which direction, or if yeah, exactly, or even like um a, a Billy Slater, or um even like a a Reece Walsh, because at least Reece Walsh he sets up his, yeah, yeah, his, yeah. His, his players. Hey, he does do, do some some playmaking moves and up from 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 fullback, and I think that's. And I haven't seen so of Fat Longo do that yet. Yeah. I mean, he can create his own play. He can create his own thing for himself. You know, he can get away from his first man. If he's in space, he's gone. See you later. But you know, I think you, I think to, for him to get to the next next level, yeah, he needs to do some. I know, try to set up some plays. Hmm. But I'm um, not. Nah, he's he's exciting. He's probably the best player so far out of these two games. Yeah. You know, in terms of his defense and his um, yeah, in terms of defense and his and his safety. Hmm. But um, now nah, man, it was just it was just an awesome feeling to be in that crowd, and you know, and, and <laughs> it was awesome seeing us get pumped. But man, at the end of the game, like the whole crowd started to sing, um, Tote. Yeah. Like everybody was singing there was that was the man that was me oh, okay. that was me and I took a video of that too. Oh, so man, you gotta post it, or you gotta uh, post it, man. I wanna think, I'm, yeah. That would have been something else, see. Man, so when we were singing that, I was thinking, man, we had seen an example to maybe Australia, yeah. you know, as a as a crowd support, mm. you know, like I think it was a gift day. This is like a celebration. Like I think Tosa Samoa having a game here with the Kiwis in front of the Auckland crowd at Eden Park. That's like uh uh thank you, eh? Yeah, thank well, you I feel like for our support from last year. Yeah, bro. I felt I felt it was like yeah, man, like cuz um 
the the fan parades, right? Like I did saw, I I bring it up, man, because I know Luppy posted something on social media about you know <laughs> what what the tours are more and what the community needed to do it. But and I know Lorenzo took offense to it. He retracted his his statement, but at the same time, it was like, you know, you guys have a way, we have, you know, Townsville has a way, we have a way. So they weren't here to see the amount of praise. Like, you know, if we're still going to put on the parade and all the praise that was happening in Mangri for the whole week post finals, like, yeah, I think that home game was pretty much a a thank you to all the the loyal tour fans, eh? Because, like, that fan they done at Victoria mm-hmm. Park, like, I remember I must have just clicked on the thread rate and I just saw, like, maybe five or six people, wrong place to be doing a fan day. But it's like, those are those people who were, like, born in, like, 2000. Five, eh? Like, you had no idea. Like, bro, if Ponsonby Rugby League is the oldest club in New Zealand and they're having the tour boys f- show up at that old, the oldest club, it goes to show how how far back our offer is to the Auckland City, man. And then mm. get that, you know, get that one bit better. Oh, bro, don't just play on Nine Smart or, or, or the Trust or Harbour. Bro, they're going to play at Eden Park. Mm. Like, you know, they got to see how far we've come, like, in terms of, like, you know, bro, you can. Mm. You can celebrate small, but if you're talking about bro, them singing Celtic, like bro, that's the like icing on the cake, bro. Like, even if we had got <laughs> pumped a hundred, no, what it was still gonna be solid. We don't, but can you guys do this? I bet you Townsville couldn't yeah. do that, man. No way. Exactly, and I think you know that goes to show. Just same as MMT, mm. you know, with their with their support yeah. they got. I mean, I think what it's doing, it's showing New Zealand Rugby Union, you know what what sport can do. Yeah, bro. To a fan base, yeah, and you know what? They can be fucking jealous all they want. Mm. Like we, how come we don't support you guys? Don't support All Blacks like that, or the Blues, or yeah. like that. You know why? Because it's more than yeah. that. You know. Oh, and that's and it's so. purely their identity and being proud, eh? Like you know, Mika, like next mm. level Mika. Like I think you know, uh, someone's like, can you remember like the Rugby League World Cup where? Uh, you know, that's all the that's all probably didn't do as good as what MMT did. But what MMT showed, I say, it was like, Oh yeah, all right, we'll see. So for the boys to go and make the final and then bring it here, and you're like, Yeah, I see why. We're still on, mate. Eh? Like you can show you, like we're on. Even if we're off, but we still win the celebrations. Yeah. Like, you know? But, yeah. Mm. Nah, yeah, you're right, nah, bro. Yeah, that was Yeah, that no, was I was Man, I was I was I was proud to be a part of that. Just to be in the crowd, man. Like be there, like not watching on TV. Because it's these moments, see, in moments of like this is like history. You can't miss because these are experiences you can never get again. Yeah, you know. And it's like the experience we got what watching the Tour Samoa at the Rugby World Cup, League World yeah. Cup, like the experience of watching them beat England. Yeah. You know, make it to the final. I mean, damn, yeah. being in the parades. Being part of the campaign, you know, from afar, yeah. and then you know, for them to come here to our hometown and play in front of us, you know, yeah, this is like, this is like a long time coming, like, yeah, like they never came to the parade in Auckland, eh? They never came here, eh? Bro, I bet after the World I Cup, bet you those but, Aussie, those Aussie born dog boys, man, that that will this will be with them forever, eh? Not so much because of the score and the loss, but the crowd reaction, the welcoming done at Victoria Park, and even the whole week, man. Because, mm. yeah, bro, like, I, I've spoken to boys that played international, played both both New Zealand and for the homeland, and they even say it, eh? It's like, it's a different, it's a different energy and a different feeling, eh? It's like, just, it doesn't, you can't compare the two, but they are both sort of good in their own right, but... Yeah, man. If, if if the crowd is singing like a Simon Wong song, G, like, come on. <laughs> That's like, I'm like, fuck, I wish I were there. But, you know, you're to be, where you were at the time of everything happening, bro, that was where you meant to be, you know? So, nah, mm. that's good, bro. That's cool to hear. Yeah, man. So, that, um, yeah, man, just, yeah, it's tonight it's, um, it's the cricket. So, Tall Blacks, oh, not Tall Blacks, uh, but Black Caps are playing uh, India. So both undefeated in the World Cup, Cricket World Cup. So is it the 2020 or the one days? No, it's a one day over in India. Because they got the Cricket World Cup on in India. So it's uh, 9.30 tonight. So 
I'll probably since we've got no work tomorrow, I'll just probably see if I can watch the whole thing. Since it's gonna be a hard game. Mm. Mm. So yeah, man, that's uh, me for sports this week. It's good. It's been good. Man, <laughs> did you know who won the Naki and was it Oh Hawks game? Um because that was on at the same time, eh? The black was it the League Friends? Kiwi Friends? Taranaki one. Oh well. Twenty two nineteen. Bro, I told you well, I'm sure I'm I'm sure I said it, man. The Naki Ford pack, bro, next level, eh? The Naki yeah. Ford pack is something else, man. I wanna go uh, Hooks Bay probably um <laughs> too high from the cocaine snorting from the <laughs> broken shield. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very. But what I thought <laughs> show, it shows like, bro, that's um, you know, the two canes, like sort of um territories. Eh? I think it was the Wellington and and the Naki semi. Like obviously, mm. Wellington's doing well. You know, it shows the depth of talent coming through. It's doing well. But nah, bro, I was I, I saw it was evident, bro. Like even when they beat Auckland and then the game, I watched them. Earlier in the season, I was like, bro, they got a good team, man. I was the counties, the counties Taranaki game. And I was watching freaking um what's his name? Hoskins getting fighting from those guys, from those Lucy's eh, and the props. It's like bro, they got a mm. good squad, man. But I love that. Like I, you can just tell, hey, if you got a good line out and your forward pack can you know recycle the ball like it's second nature, bro. Man. Oh congrats to them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty interesting because these are two teams you never thought will make the final way. Like they're not the traditional big city teams. They yeah. usually make the NPC Grand Final. You know, it's either one or the other, or it might be Taranaki or a big city like Auckland, Wellington, or, or Canterbury. So the thing, yeah. So it's probably a good thing for the competition to have Taranaki and Hawks Bay in there. Mm. But yeah, there was that um, what's his name? I forgot the 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 props name, but there was a uh, like a little TikTok of the the prop was a Swane, um, Tomalolo the prop, because there was a video that I shared a while ago and it was of the the referee telling the Wellington captain to to hush. But yeah. if you remember far back enough, can you remember like there's the video of John Schwaga thinking up against Tomalolo and the scrum. So it was just reliving that moment while you got it on film, you know? But the ref was like the street eye guy once. I was like, fuck. But obviously the ref's not in on it, so he would never know, you know? Yeah. But that was pretty cool, eh? When you, when you see those moments, like, you know, they go back from freaking way back, back. What was that video? Did she put it up when the, the player did the... Choo! And he got in trouble yeah. from the ref? No, yeah, that's that, um, that Tamalolo and um, Shuonga. Oh. They had a. I think that that's when they lost the, the um, the Ryan Philly, and he had mm. just come onto the field. You know, he was just you know like doing that. Chew, yeah, come, come, and he ends up folding the scrum like the Wellington scrum, and then when John gets up, he's like, you know, he's got him like by his jersey, and he's saying, yeah, let's go again, let's go again. Then he does it again, and then like ten years later, from the exact same moment, he's doing it again. And that's why that true goes on. Like, if Wellington, for Wellington to be doing it to the bay, that's why they were doing it. It's like they're trying to recapture that moment, you know, reenact it. But oh. zipped his own other foot. But the ref obviously had no idea. Like, but he was just trying to. That's how fights start, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Also, um, from sport to something completely different. Um, this is a story you put up on the on the Facebook page. So. It's about this man who had a court order to disown his, um, to the, disown teen twins who he's looked after, um, all their lives up until their te- teenagers because, because he, he doesn't want to be their dad anymore because he knows that He's had a vasectomy, and he reckons, oh, well, it's obvious, they were conceived when he was having a threesome with his uh, his girlfriend back then. Um, so he's told the court. Yeah, this is a strange applied, story. So he's applied to the court 
that he no longer wants to be legal guardians of these twin girls. Yes. Yes. Are he now, even knew you could do no, what happened. That's what cracks me up. Well, okay, let, let's just explain this, right? Let's just explain this. So, here's, here's a couple, right? The guy has a vasectomy. He doesn't want any kids, right? But then, this couple goes into having, gets into having a threesome with another man, right? Now, the girlfriend gets pregnant. And obviously, he's from the other man because he's got his vasectomy. Anyway, she's had twins, right? But they go on living with the twins. So he, he sort of raises them, right? And until they're teenagers. And now he wants to disown. He go, he's gone to the court because he wants to disown them now. Mm. And it looks like just because he doesn't want to pay a child support. And he's won the case. He's won the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's pretty fucked up. Hey, like I said, man, <laughs> that's some white shit, man. Like, I don't think there's any I guy I got over there of people who would let them go and just do their business in front of them, knowing that oh I can't get a call to go ahead, do your thing. Like wouldn't you be like uh S D D screen, uh make sure your you you don't you can't produce any kids like bro, like he obviously had some there was something in his mind that was telling him, Well, either one thing can come out of this um, we may keep some money on online, um, you know, doing an adult film, or she's gonna get pregnant. So, pick which one he would probably sort of dive towards. He's like, because he says in the statement that he says in the court, I just usually was the one who just sat there and watched. Like, come on, like, mm. fuck. <laughs> if that's not screaming red flag, oh man, I don't know. It has to be something that happened, first right? of all, it has to be something deeper that happened. I feel. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's it's white kind of shit because I think, you know, he's he must be gay because yeah, if it was that. me, yeah, I never, I'd rather have another girl and then another yeah, guy. Yeah. I never thought that though. <laughs> Possibly, probably, could yeah. Now the now the thing is, it has to be because situation has changed and he doesn't want to pay any child support. Maybe he was paying child support before. Maybe she found out she he could pay child support, or maybe. The guy she had a threesome with doesn't pay any child support, and maybe she can get child support off this guy, yeah, off the original guy, right? Yeah. And maybe it changed the circumstance, and now she has applied for child support. Now he's come out and say, "Oh no, nah, I don't want the kids anymore. I don't want to disown them. I need to go to court yeah. and stop the child support." And by doing that, I have to disown the kids because he's raised them. He's yeah. raised them. Yeah, they've called him dad. But that's um, so he was alright with it before. I don't know, bro. Like. Can you like you know like can you imagine that being in the island family far out? I don't know. Oh hell no! <laughs> Bloody freaks! Fucking... Freakazoids! <laughs> yeah. You know, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make a movie about it. Else. That's all I can say, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But how about those twins, sports twins? When they find out the truth, where how they were conceived? Oh no! Nah. Oh. <laughs> That's a freaky shit, man. Damn. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of freaky shit, or in this case, maybe some inappropriate freaky shit, um, you also put up a post about a reality TV show in America called 90 Day Fiancé. Oh. And there's a snippet of your mate, uh, Aswil. So there's a snippet of... Um, He's got, I don't, <coughs> what's the name of his wife? A Kalani. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what on um, Kalani. They're still married, it looks like. Um, they were friends and they're at like a resort. And it's at night, they're at a resort and they're like in their sort of um, bath robes, bath towels, and they're sitting on the um, wow. the benches, looks like by the pool. Oh, they're sitting around a fire, right? Like at a resort. Is that like a campfire or is it? Yeah, yeah, but it looks like it's by the pool. Anyway, he starts stripping. Um, uh, Asuelo, he starts stripping. But um, he's got a t-shirt on there. He's got a towel wrapped around his waist. And and what he does, he um, takes off his towel, reveals his songaimiki, 
and starts doing a like a lap dance sort of thing or a strip tease dance. Is he trying to do like everybody. a magic mic? Is he boy? Magic, magic mic, mic, yeah, yeah. And it's sort of embarrassing. Yeah, but it looks like Kal- Kalani is is loving it, and the people around him are, are loving it. And to me, it looks like he's just making a fool of himself. Yeah. But what makes worse for me is you know he's doing it with his um his bell. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think, you know, the ancestors would appreciate that sort of thing, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was elect class to me, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you? Oh, no way. Like, initially, when I first watched it, because I want to be inked up, right? I want to feel like I'm worthy of wearing that. I mean, we've heard Lorenzo's take on what it should be, what you should be reminded by when you're doing something in the heat of the moment. Or you feel like you're not holding your principle and value. Uh, you look down at your ink, act appropriately, eh? And he's even mentioned like mm-hmm. I love how he's mentioned, bro. Hey, you know, some on cats we do some silly things, you know. Sometimes we don't, and we need to be reminded. But I think if you're in front of a like a camera crew, as well as the whole world doing something like that, do you think the villagers that he lived with, who saw him get his ink, would think? Highly of him, like I think you 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 lose respect straight away for someone like that, you know. Mm, mm. It's, it's especially when it's it's a sign of your service yeah, yeah. to people around you, one. Mm. Yeah, because it's a respectful thing, and like you you serve you serve the people, you serve whoever's your you serve whoever is around you. That doesn't look like serving <laughs> to me. Yeah, to me that's like um. <laughs> Like, you know, and I don't want to degrade him or, like, you know, each to his own. But to me, that's like, if, if he's used service like working at a resort to be, you know, to help the Samoa come to me by letting all these tourists come in and see what Samoa is by by the natives, by the locals, and he goes and does something over there like that, that says a lot about just him. Huh? Mm-hmm. But when you're wearing your ink like that, you know, you, you're you're flexing your 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 parents. You're flexing your village, but above all of that, bro, you're flexing the Angano and the the country nonstop. Because you, you you know you couldn't tell me like, okay, all those men in their circle, if they all did it. Well, obviously everyone's gonna see is the Samoan dude like doing that. It's like, wow. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, but as, as as well as all that, you're actually representing your service to the people mm. to people. Right, not just to someone's, but to everybody. Everybody you stand in, uh, stand in front of, yeah. you know, people at your work, you know, as well as your families, people at your work, people at your sports team, go to the gym, like people. If you go to another country, the people you hang around with, like, you know, it's a sign of your your service, all of that, and you're not doing anything to serve people by doing that kind of stuff, you know. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's like th- that goes against what. Y- what you trying to represent? Yeah, yeah. So, do, do you reckon he's been westernized? <laughs> oh, I think because it's a TV show, and oh, yeah, he has been westernized yeah. because that's that's probably like the life he's living now outside of the life of Samoa, and that's all he knows—the life outside. If you in and around people, you know, and, and that kind of. And that kind of nature, like in America, it's all about and 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 look what he's doing. He's married to that that girl, mm. but they're putting their lives on this reality TV show. And this and reality TV doesn't even care about all that. All they care about is it's is true. ratings. And if you can do all that shit on the TV show that makes people turn on TV and watch, that's what they care about. Hard. It's got nothing to do with your dignity. They don't care about your dignity yeah, or whatever, yeah. or all that stuff. That all they want is just ratings, and that's what reality TV is. And if they're Always on these TV shows. Hey, it looks like they're always on these reality TV shows because I think that's that's kind of like their job now. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's their life all, now, and they can't get rid of it. Is, if you're like, involved yeah. with that, all his hmm? drama is like really iconic, com- like of reality TV. Like when he first hmm. landed in the, in America and he was doing his Siva at the airport. You know, right up to all the drama of his mom coming over asking for money. You know, that, that stuff was all over social media, man, you know? And just when he thought, like, it was laid to rest with all the work he was doing for when the the um, the Manu boys were travelling the Seventh Circuit and that, 
And then he does something like that. It's like, bro. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dust him about this thing, bro. You should know, you know, know your boys mm. are gonna see this when you when you get old, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I can't I can't tell him what I can't tell him what to do with his his bell because I don't have one. So there's that, but I'm just speaking about what I've heard other people talk about it and what other people have said, what it means to yeah. them and what it means to being someone, you know. So that's all I can speak on because I don't have one. So, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> crazy. It's a crazy world. Okay. Um, You've got a memory lane? Yeah, man, i got a memory lane. Um, I shared on the, um, our page a uh, picture of a car back in the day i think so our police cars at the moment um in new zealand we've gone over to skoda's beamers and before that there were gm um holdens um a lot of them were the i think from the v vy to earlier vx's um now and like this picture that I found, I found online, was a picture of a, a, um, a Mitsubishi. So this is a Mitsubishi Sigma. Um, back in the days when the cop cars were black and white, hey, like the um, like the police academy American cars. What's mm-hmm. crazy is that I remember these cars because there was this one dude. He used to always sit underneath the the bridge. Of um, Point Shiv. So if you're coming back from Point Shiv, Motet coming back out west, because there was sort of like a um, a spot on the side that this guy would always sit in his Sigma. But the reason why I think it's memory lane, it's just the the turn of the um, the changeover of police cars. Because I know Holden had the contract with the New Zealand Police for so long, but Man, when I saw it, it made me feel old. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what the hell? Like, you know, if you showed a kid like in the last 20 years, he was born in the last 20 years, right? From like 2000, they'll be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, you know, everyone knows the famous, uh, what's the time, Mr. Wolf from What's the Warriors? That red holder and that Jake's driving, right? But to see, can you imagine that car getting pulled over from that, that uh, Mr. Bushy Sigma? <laughs> It's like a square car, <laughs> a square car to a, in terms of a round car. So, yeah, can you remember those vehicles? Also? I remember the um the Ministry of Transport. Eh? It was the traffic police. Traffic huh? police, nah, la. the police, the black and white cars. Mm. Huh? So that was the time where yeah. traffic officers were separate from the actual police force, huh? Mm. So yeah, the that's cops right. Were yeah. Like just in um the blue, the two tone blue, the light, the baby blue, and the dark blue trousers. Mm. And these guys, I think they had the black trousers with the white offal and then the black polo. Sort of like a English yeah. taxi driver. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. With the with the chicken yeah. stripe eh, around yeah. the head. But um, it was like, it was like easy, eh? Because all you had to watch for if you're driving, it was a traffic cop. You didn't have to worry about a police car because it wasn't yeah, their job. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was, it was crack up, <laughs> eh? Oh, my idea, man. But yeah, I just remember my old man. Like, my old man used to trick a drive from like, man, I but. So, instead of turning left, coming from New North Road, Avondale always, right? The man would do those loop all the way up to Point Chef and then turn around just to check if their, their, um, their cop was parked on the side. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, man. Just don't drink full stop, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, the old police cars, bro. Like, bro, that's a flashback, eh? Showing my age, man. Yeah. Oh, no. Hmm. But then I had another so picture, you remember oh, I had yeah, another picture cool. that came up and was of I don't know if you can find that on your on your on your search list, but it's just a question, like if you had to pick one. So in nineteen ninety three there were vehicles like the super vehicles of the time in nineteen ninety three. Man, let me find this, let me find this. The cars that came up were um the three cars. So one was a Nissan Skyline in nine ninety three. Another one was a Honda in nine ninety three. A Toyota Celica 
in 93 mm. and a Mazda RX-7 in 1993. Have you seen pictures of them? Can can you see pictures of them? I can see the um Celica. S- Celica. So cuz remember it went up against the CRX, against the CRX from the CRX. Though, like I think like in like you like cuz like showing my age eh? like when I saw the Sigma I was like thinking damn that would have been like the transition of fuel injection V6 engines to the smaller smaller motors. Cause that's like early nineties, eh? Like that would have been like a eighty-eight to I think a nineteen ninety vehicle, that police car. Yeah. What came after that would have been the Jappers and that sort of like hit off the low. You know the Lou Carvalho, the two door, four door cars. But Japan, bro, I think that was when the Japan market broke into New Zealand. Like, when I think about cars from the early 90s, like, 91, 92, 93. Mm. But we're not, yeah. But just a question. If you had to pick a car valley to flex, what colour and which one of those three vehicles? Uh, probably a red um, Celica. Why, why red and why Celica? I think because everyone had them, but always the black or grey ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll just have a red one, I think. Man, it's a nice car, eh? It's a nice car. Although I did prefer the CRX, just because it was the two-door. Yeah. And, I, and I liked the back of it. It was flat. It had that flat back mm. and the hatchback, eh? Man, I don't know, eh? I think I'd go, I'd go with the, the, the Skyline. I'd go with the Skyline. I think, man. Skyline was always like a... A flex car eh? with the with the boy yeah, races, yeah, eh? Yeah. I mean, it still is, bro. Like, if you think about cars that have held its value over time, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the Godzilla's like one of those cars, man. The, the Nissan Skyline. Oh, the Godzilla. Yeah, that was a that was a popular one. Remember when the um Toyota Altiza came out with the circle, oh, yeah. the circle lights? When they came out, that was popular. Yeah. Eh? That sort of took over the um. Skyline, sort of. Mm. Yeah. yeah, bro. Well, like again, man. The the Japanese cars, eh, they came in from that window, from like the from ninety three right up to the two thousands, because that pretty much was dominated mm. the screen too, eh, you know. And everyone, everyone was feel like had subs and exhausts. <laughs> Do you remember the Unos? Yes. Who who made that Unos? Mazda. Mazda Unos. Did you have one? No, do you remember them? No. Nah. Mazda Unos. And then... There's the MR2. Remember the MR2? Yeah, yeah the MR2. Right, that's funny. That was just a, a two a two seater. Right. It was a real the boot, boot at the front knee. The mid at the back. Was it? Oh, yeah. okay. It was just a two seat day. I remember um I remember driving behind one and the license plate said two gays. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was funny. Nice. Memory lane of cars. Right, yeah. I, oh, Taking me I back. say that only because the amount of money I've been pouring into the Goyinga's car and like yeah. Where are you gonna find a seatbelt for a car it's like two thousand? Like, oh shit! Like early two thousands, <laughs> like a two thousand one seatbelt. Like, <clears throat> damn. Well, you know these cars you named. Uh, these are the kind of cars that were popular when I was in of my cell phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Started to come out and like all the boys started to you know get these kind of cars and you know I, I think I've I've been in a few of those kind of cars over the years just. The with different people owning those sort of cars. Um, the one my first car was a Mazda Familiar. Oh yeah, the hatch one. I got a Mazda Familiar. Oh, the sedan. Huh? A hatch one or a sedan? Hatchback. Oh, yeah, nice. hatchback. And then, and then that actually got stolen. Yeah, I mean, cause they were, so they got they stolen. Were and then, cars, eh, those familiar. Yeah, yeah, they actually got stolen. And then uh, my second car was uh, Impreza, a Subaru. Yeah. Impreza. A manual too, so it was good. Yeah, yeah, man. I always, I always love CBZ, but man, just for, yeah, very. Right, when I saw that little little car, I just thought the cars that came after that are like, darling, some good cars. Eh? <laughs> <laughs>
All right, this uh, we've got next. Um, we'll go for uh, you got a food review? Oh, yeah, just a quick one, man. So, like last week, yep. I took my youngest girl, took my daughter to the flea market, Avondale flea market, and you know, it's surprisingly because she goes to church hard out. I told her, bye. Just email Yesu and just tell them you're going to have a day off today. I'm going to take you to the flea market. So I took her and my, my son to the flea market. I went and bought me another hat, a couple of hats. I thought, like, man, I deserve to give me a couple more new hats. And we pulled up. Um, I got a mate who owns a um, Bangkeke trailer. So he's been there. Sorry, he's been there going on 20 years, man. So about 2003, they started at the markets. This is my us, the Suisala family. So they set up a pankeke and they do um, half moon pies, the pie fellas. And since then, like, primarily we used to just go in and get the pankekes and the um, and the pie fellas. And for them to add something else to the menu, so now they do like little, like, they're not little, but they're actually quite big. For 16 bucks, you can get a, um, just like a, you know, like a, you're too lazy to cook, kongai. Go there before one o'clock, man. Pray. Auntie got you sorted. So you're like, in my head, I was thinking, oh. And like, bro, I, I need glasses, man. I need to like go and have a good look at the menu. Because I couldn't see, man. But I could smell, you know. You know, you get there, you can smell. And I was like, oh, okay. And I go, oh, so I'll just have a couple of plates, man. The horses passed me out the pancakes and that. And like, I really wanted like a pineapple pie, which is like four bucks. So I, I didn't end up getting a pineapple pie, but Auntie dished me up like two plates paid for them i got home and i sat I man I, I was like trying not to eat while i was driving so i waited till i got home and i opened it up man bro this curry was on eh you don't have a curry but you just want to season it yourself like just a come out just a little bit of salt bro hit the spot man hit the spot with the um with the rice and then i was like damn man i'm gonna enjoy it i'm not gonna mix it with my chop suey then i had the chop suey and the taro piece inside I was like annoyed that I just walked away with two, <laughs> you know, because this is only lunchtime, right? Because, you know, we haven't had kongai in the afternoon yet. So we left like early in the morning, like about nine, ten. Because I eaten it at about 11, I was like, fuck, because then my girl was going to get back home from church. She's going to want some. <laughs> so I was like figuring out, oh, what, what, what will she wear? If she will eat this, she will this. And because she's being funny with her meal, she's like, oh, just leave me the taro then. So I left it a taro away. And then she had it with the chicken. Oof. For a family who have been at the market, who have grown into doing island plates, if you want your island fixed, man, go there. <laughs> go early in the morning, man, and go get an island plate. Sometimes they might not be there before mm. 10. But, bro, I swear, man, for for me not having to go to the same ones that I've been to, like the one in Castle and the one on Valley Road, I just thought, bro, this is approved, man. Like, out of five, I'm going to give auntie's plate a four and a half, man. And I'm being generous because mm. I wanted a buy fella to go with my meal afterwards. So yeah, man, support them, bro. They're the um the yellow caravan closest to the far side of the market, so the closest closest yeah. to the um shell side. But you'll see the Ulsa's Pajero. It's got a massive maroon um Nissan Pajero hooked up to the um the Bankekes yellow trailer. But yeah, man, four and a half stars, bro. Like I was like. I was too lazy, bro. I was too lazy to cook, man. That's why I was like, <laughs> I'll just get two plates. Thinking that my kids will just eat the pancakes and that. But the pancakes were yeah. good too, man. So yeah, they were the pancakes that I bought, bought over last week. I just thought, oh, man, mm. I'll, I'll leave me a couple and then you know, take some. But yeah. Oh, nice. With it, man. With the, with the walk. Did you get, get, catch the name of that um, caravan? Yeah. Oh, nah. I don't know it off a half, but it'll, it's just the yellow caravan, the the Pankeke's sign on the top and it'll be hooked up to the Nissan Pajero. So yeah. Mm. They got you sorted, man. Oh nice. Okay, next time I'm on the market I'll look out for the yellow caravan. There's a new a burger joint open ne- near you, near your house on the corner. You know they that coffee shop? Yeah. That coffee shop that so it looks like it's a bar key happening at night sometimes, bro. Because they got the hey. fairy lights. They got the fairy lights, so they got a there's a um the coffee shop. Then they've got a gazebo yeah. outside, and then it's got a, like an outdoor area yeah. with the um, the fairy lights. Mm. Yeah, so there's a new um, burger joint yeah. there. 
So I don't know it might be a future food review for that. Oh, we might have to go over there and uh, have a burger each and do a review. Wait, wait, do Friday. <laughs> Friday's my day off, mate. <laughs> oh yeah, sounds good. We'll go there. I forgot the name of it, but we'll um, we'll go it there. Goes anyway. off there, man. Spray with the amount of cars I see up there, and then they got music going. Huh? So it looks like there's a little bar. Yeah, I thought oh, it was true. a bar or something. But if it's a burger trend, okay, I can understand. I can understand, man. <laughs> oh yeah, sweet. On Friday we'll, we'll go. Yep. All right, man. Um, we'll go to a uh, movie. Uh, what what have you been What have you been watching? Um. I'll start with you first because I'll, I'll talk about the movie I saw on Friday. Okay. Um, I had to screenshot it, man, because I'm, I'm, I'm at that point where I'm starting to forget what I'm um, watching. Oh, man. I've been watching that. I just started watching Nicky Darwin for again. And um, so I've been watching Cere- Celebrity Treasure Island, was the New Zealand one. Because my <laughs> couple oh, yeah. nicks on there. <laughs> Yeah, bro, my most next on eh? and I'm just laughing at bro, like, cause it's been like a mixed bag of like, like celebrity, like you know who you, who do you call a celebrity? Cause there's a chick mm. called um, I forget her name's Tori Schmidt. She's half someone, half some, half someone, half Maori, but she comes on this program called yeah. Ahikaroa. So she was just on there, and she's trying to strategically get further into the game with Nuka Four. So oh. it's just funny, like they had a side chat where they were talking about they've never seen a Maori or Pacifica go further in the game, even though Josh Confield mm. won won it twice. But it's like that, you know. Then just you know how like people forget it's a game. Yeah, but yeah, when Steve Price, bro, he's ah, bro, he's a good story. Eh? He flew over yeah. to come and do the um, the Slurry Treasure Island and won like maybe twenty grand for his charity. But no, it's been cool, eh? Like, because even like Tamiti was on and he got eliminated, but just the yeah. impact of someone of that nature and, you know, their age coming to the space. Because last year was, I think, or a couple of years ago, it was Buck Shelford and people were blown away how Buck is, you know, how he's raw, honest, and they can see how, bro, that's why he's a great, eh? Like, you know. But I've been watching that and Shorty. Do you know what island they're on? And then I think they're somewhere in Wellington. They're somewhere in Wellington. So oh. yeah, it's coastal because yeah, it looks pretty roughy. Eh? Yeah. Mm. But there was one other thing I was watching. It wasn't hard out, hard out. Um, but I, I know I wanted to share it, man. It's just my phone's just. I need glasses, man. I'm in denial. Eh? I just either I'm too 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 tired us to go buy me some new glasses or. I'm just in the now, like thinking my eyes are gonna get better. Eh? I literally watched it the other day, and I can't remember. Nah, I, I can't remember. It was, I thought I screenshot the name of it, but I didn't. Yeah. But, All right, uh, Slippery Chairs Island. I haven't watched it in ages. I think I watched the first ever one, and I never watched it again. Yeah. But I see the ads, and I saw uh, it's a meaty. Um, his last day on it and stuff. Oh, bro, because you know, gosh, just sorry on 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 the celebrity true island because there's some challenges, right? Like Steve Price, for example, had a, he's got a bad memory. He went home because the challenge was a memory one, physical challenge as well. Mm. Like he's killing it. Him and Nick are just rolling everyone. But because I like I know Nick's nature, like he's a he's come on late, like he's a good carry, you know. And obviously his his kind nature is getting him far on the game because every time someone leaves they're leaving him the clues <laughs> but the camera doesn't show like oh he hangs out with them he hangs out with them but it's like this guy's just moving yeah. swiddling through the game by everyone's because he's got a lot of information now so it's like cool watching them like get far away come more simple mm. but yeah there was that one challenge though. there's a challenge like where I think you get to 15 days and then they write you a letter and whoever gets the letter mm. you know how people bro, when they get to 15 days they and they start to miss home, and bro, it's a, it's a man tearjerker. Right? Every time I see that one, because even like when they have the one-on-one conversation with the camera, like if you, what would it mean to you if you win this challenge? And, and it goes to show the power of like leaving messages and like checking in, now, like you know, because well, every time someone gets that on the show, they usually win it because it just gives them another mm. boost of purpose, you know, 
like just when they feel like they've had enough ready to tap out they get a letter from home mm. and all their kids and their mum and dad and they say oh, i love you son you we're so proud of you just little things like that eh, that you were like man any other day you wish you heard those words or you know someone opened up a, a book and then a letter fell out and said oh to my kids something like that bro but yeah yeah man tv and z bro they got a lucky with the celebrity, celebrity treasure island and the editing man so, yeah. hey, but that's what i've been watching this Oh sweet! So on Friday I went out with 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 the missus to the movies. We went to to Westgate. We watched a movie called Killers of the Flower Moon. It was directed by Martin Scorsese, one of my favorite uh, movie directors of all time. Um, and it's a, it's a true story about. Um, it's based in 1920 in in America in Oklahoma. So the story is around the Osage murders. So the, the Osage is a tribe. An Indian tribe and then a native Indian American yeah. tribe, and you know what happened in in America, like with with the Indians and that, like how they took over the land and the work in the West. They sort of, um, as reparations, gave certain Indian tribes uh, uh, pieces of land that they can claim their own, and they called them reservations, yeah. right? So this particular tribe called the Osage tribe, Indian tribe. So the Americans they say, "Oh yeah, you, you guys can have this land." So under under the law, what they made with the reparations and all that, like for for Indian reservations, the land is entirely owned above and underground to the to those Indians. So they they own that that piece of land. Um, they can do whatever they want with it. So they were assigned this piece of land, and uh, they they mm. moved in. Right. Little did the Balangis know. That there's oil wow. under that land. <laughs> there's oil. And the Indian tribe, they struck the oil. Right? They struck the oil. So they became, in that time, they became the richest people overnight yeah. in the whole world. Like in terms of like um, a whole tribe, like any tribe around the world, indigenous tribe. Automatically overnight, they found oil on their land. They they became rich. So what happens? They have to they have to make deals with these oil companies in Texas and everywhere to um, siphon the oil out. So they what they do is they sell the oil to to everyone else and all these other oil like um, companies around. And what they they and each of the tribes people, if you're Indian, if you're a part of that Indian tribe, you get a check in the mail every month. So. Society is like, um, remember, this is back in 1920, so 10 grand is a lot of money. 10 grand Jeez. is like equal to 100 yeah. grand now, so, sort of thing. So you can imagine these. Um, so it's, it's it's funny because when you go to this, when when you see the old photos of them, they're they're Indians, but they're wearing like, um, you can tell that they've got money. You can tell they're, they're wealthy for the clothes yeah. they wear, right? Right. So, anyway, so so this has happened. What the story is about, and this is a true story, is that um, the white people start moving in and 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 build this town next to the re- oh, wow. reservation, right? So they build hotels, they build hotels, they build hospitals, they build blah blah blah, a town next to this reservation. So the idea is that these white people. Like they want a, a piece of the oil. They're, like they're trying, trying to, to tap, get the oil. Tap into it. You know? From the they're side trying to tap into it. Yeah, yeah. And they do it by start they start to murder oh my God. each of the Indians. Like over a period of time. So this, this is true if you if you look it up. It's a true story. Over a period of time, like ten years or something, they they killed like yeah. sixty of them. Over the over the course. Or trying to get their oil. So, so this is what this this film is about. Mm. It's very interesting because w- w- when you watch this film, it doesn't really tell you straight up what's going on, but it just takes you along the journey of the film, and you start to piece it together to do, yeah. on your own when you, when you see what's happening, and you're like thinking, "Fuck, Crazy, man, these man. white people are evil, evil man. man!" Like you know, like and it, you know what? It's like it's a true story, right? And you, then you think to yourself, you know, yeah. what's new? You know, this this is. What you've seen, right, is a common thing throughout history with indigenous people yeah. and the white man and colonization and everything like that. Because when the thoughts I felt when I was watching this, this is exactly 
how colonization happened to the indigenous yeah. Maori in New Zealand. But this is just a small scale. This is just a little town. It's the same thing, but yeah. it's just a little town happening. The same thing. So it's all the same, you know. This is colonization. This is this is first hand look at what colonization does. But um, th there's more to it from what I'm saying because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's a very dark yeah. story, and it's a sad story too. But it's unbelievable in the fact that this actually happened. But in the same time, it's not surprising. So it's like to me, if you thought white people can't be any more evil, well, we watch this film. <laughs> if all you can speak is like, they're such a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. No, it's a good movie, eh? It's a good movie. I think it should um, do oh, well yeah. in the Oscars, because I think it's up for Oscar. Yeah, so... Yeah, man. I enjoyed it. It's a good movie. Did it's a good film. Any... It'll, it'll, probably, it'll probably make you angry. Yeah. I already, I, I'm, I'm already probably make you angry upset, when you watch these sort of films. Did they have actual any <laughs> Indian people playing Indian characters, the actual Indian characters? Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 So, the one of the main actors is a woman... I think her name's Ivy Gladstone. She's an Indian from up north, up in in, Mon in Montana. So I watched one of her interviews about the film, and she was like, because she's not from that tribe. She's from a, a different Indian tribe, but she, so she doesn't know the story of their oh, wow. tribe, what happened. But she because she's Indian, she can understand yeah, where they're she coming from. About what mm. happened to her people. But it's it's not her tribe. Because so, she said, yeah, but um, where I'm from, my tribe, we have our own problems. But we didn't have these kind of problems. Oh, really? So it was, I came when I when I was learning the story, learning the story about my character. You know, I had a heart for my own people, it, as, but as a different tribe. So, you know, Damn. yeah. But that's... but no, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good story around the, the yeah. facts of what happened. Hmm. And I, I was amazed at how it was written. Because it's it's a it's it's in a point of view of a it's a it's a point of view of of characters that are involved, and you're not really sure who's right or wrong or who's you're sort of confused not confused but you sort of see the contradictions yeah. happen. People say stuff, but they do something else. I hate that. Yeah. Hey. It's like when you see your mates do it on. <laughs> <laughs> but man, it must be a good film. Yeah, man. Would you rate it? Yeah, this is a good film. I, I recommend it. Man, I rate it. Um, I rate it five out of five. Eh? Yeah, I rate it five out of five. I mean, if if you like these kind of stories, like these dark, re yeah. real life sort of, you know, it's one of these stories that mm. you can't believe it's true. But then at the same time, you're not surprised. <laughs> but it's, it's I know it's I know it's one of those important stories that you gotta know yeah, all the yeah, shit that yeah. happens in the world, and this is just one of the shit shit things that happen in the world that people can be evil. Yeah. You know, people can be so evil, and the, and, the, and this is one of those films that exposes that, so it exposes some more. We know we we know the evil that happens in the world, and this is just a, a little piece of. Of something else that's evil. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Sweet man. Um, we're running out of time, so shall we go for some last words? Um, yeah, man. I just wanted to use the, the opportunity just to officially plug the um the talk along language week. Um, so today they had the combined mess at the Great PIC, and it's good to see some old folk. Um. Good to see the cuz um met in a Leo do his thing in front of um the community. Uh Matt's the actual voice of the Beatle of the Pacific, New FM. So it's cool to see the time that he's been up in Auckland, which is going on more than twenty three years, that he's become a voice and sort of like just the um incorporated society director. And I love his heart, man. He comes from a good family. His mum and my mum are first cousins. So it's just good to see someone of our generation who's born in New Zealand get up and flex and actually take a hold of um, the cultural festivities for the week. Um, 
it's been cool watching film on um on um on Facebook as well. My family down in Poirot and what they've got planned for the week. Um, I felt that um it's moved me this week because the passing a year has passed since my auntie least passed, and we we're there last night celebrating her one year in the cemetery and. It felt like the real life Coco man, you know, when when it went dark, all the lights came on, and it just the only thing that was missing was that bridge that crosses you over to the other side. But my final words for this week, man, is to um stop and breathe, take a deep a deep breath, and and look around and and see the beauty in life. This this past week's been challenging, in the fact that I've been sick, but. I think I've been a bit overwhelmed for the last month and just worrying about trying to get too much things done. And I love that I can have conversations with people and they can sort of just assure you, like, man, just do, just get it in order, right? Like, sort of a priority list of what needs to be done and don't overcomplicate things. So in saying that, man, um, yeah, stop and breathe, man. Just take a moment to yourself and just admire the beauty of life i think it's been um one of those things that can be hard to to do because you're so caught up on the rat race man but you know you have one life do the most you can with it and and just breathe eh? like like i said man but yeah you know what it is man Sean Luce, yeah, stop and breathe. Man, I was stopping breathing all today with my hangover. Uh, <laughs> so, history, waste of a day, but hey, man, gotta have that uh, relaxation. I'll do better tomorrow. Day off. <laughs> so, yeah, man, my last words, man. Happy uh, long weekend for everyone in New Zealand. Enjoy your day off tomorrow, Labor Day. And, um, yep, I'll be up late tonight watching the Black Caps, seeing how that goes. Hopefully we can get a, another win of a quality team. Because we beat England the first game. And England's been shocking because they lost to uh, um, Afghanistan. So, I don't know. They're like, the wheels are falling off over there in England. But, um, yeah, man. Thanks for everyone tuning in to listen to Empty Out The Clip. Thanks, thanks Let's, for this? jumping on again. And, uh, yeah, everyone have a good week. Let's get the fuck out of here.